Aloha, ladies and germs. Jeremy Vaney here, and you are listening to Our Undoing Radio, Season 11. This is the fifth episode in a continuing dialogue with Tom Cheatham. We're, we're just now getting cooking. We're getting started here. Things are warming up. Things are heating up. The conversation's really getting somewhere now, is what I'm saying. So, if you missed any of it, <laughs> you might want to go back and... Uh, review the first four before you carry on with the fifth year. But for the rest of you, let's go forward with Tom Cheatham as we discuss life, the universe, and just about everything. Now I've got this terrible problem of at least transiently having understood you in Corbinian terms. And I don't, I don't know. What well, I, like I mean... That. I think that's fair-ish. Um, my question would be, did Henry Corbin think that these worlds had to be distinct? Because to my way of thinking, uh, again, to go back to like psychedelics and aliens and whatever, if these are different intelligences, what they are doing is they realize that as much as we can invent new things and explore and, and see infinite new things, and that would lead us to believe that like aliens would be far more advanced than us simply because their technology would be, but consciousness has a ceiling. And I think, mm -hmm. um, so what they're doing is trying to create equals in a sense. They're trying to, if human beings can come to their actual human nature, their full whole human nature, then they've got, they've got buddies, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're trying to wake us up into people they could have a fruitful conversation with <laughs> yeah, essentially yeah. and yeah. so we're not limited to just being like oh this lower thing that a higher thing gives intelligence to or gives communications it's like no they want us to be that too you know yeah, well, uh, well, so wait, does wait, corbin wait, I mean, account for that now, now i have now now the, i hate this i mean it's kind of exciting but i, I don't <laughs> like it because i'm not sure that this is appropriate true but Corbin says that the angel needs you just as much as you need the angel that this is a two-way relationship and they really want you to come along <laughs> um, the angel the angel needs you he says oh man you're my other half I mean Corbin talks about halves uh, I mean mm -hmm. one half the other half and I don't know if that maps onto your to your experience um but it's quite clear in corbin's world that they they need you they and that and that and then i suppose you can put it that way they want somebody else to talk to come on come on it's the whole point of this <laughs> the whole point of this creation thing is for you guys to get out of the meat out of your meat brains and come join us i think he would love that <laughs> well then maybe we just agree i mean there you go I mean, I mean, I just wouldn't have put any of the, I wouldn't, I think that the trap is, and this is why I don't understand why, well, I guess I do understand why, but, you know, putting it in religious contexts, as mystics tend to do, like, I've seen a lot of, I sh I'm lying, I've seen a lot of, I've read a, a book on, I've seen stuff on Sufism, but I've really only read one book on Sufism, yeah. and a lot of it sounds like what I say, and then I think, like, then why are you a Sufi? why are you in islam why are you and i get that you've got to at some point in history you probably hide in religion uh mm. and maybe you even need to just speak the language of the times and try to get it through to people and all of that but at some point you got to give it up or you've got to admit somewhere that no this transcends and includes religion and there are no uh we just link all this because islam and judaism and christianity are all speaking about the same thing and so they all lead to the same thing no because they're religions they lead to delusions so yeah you may see jesus you may see buddha you may see god or whatever and as the buddhist saying goes if you see buddha on the road to enlightenment kill him because that's yeah. the illusion that's your expectation yeah so yeah. why hide it in essentially what you're doing is why are you building monuments in time to the timeless and saying that that is the timeless you know, or that, if you no, stare at this a, monument that, long enough, you'll get that, timeless. That's that's a brilliant question. Because um, they should know better. But I don't think there are that many of them ever. You, you know, 
you know, like somebody said, maybe it was, maybe you even wrote about it, you know, the, the Buddha knew people weren't going to be able to do this. Yeah, that's <laughs> me. You know, <laughs> people, most people aren't going to be able to pull this off. And so, I mean, I guess I, I'll point them in the right direction. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, I'll, I'll make my scurrilous remark about Krishnamurti again. You know, if he did that for 40 years and nobody understood it, then he wasn't much of a teacher. But it's not well, so much, you know, it's, it's not, not so much fault. that as that we're all pretty, <laughs> we're all jerks. <laughs> well, we're, we're all, we all want to keep it in thought because we are thought. And so even yeah. listening to Krishnamurti is like, great, I want to listen to Krishnamurti and then have a discussion. And then I want to debate it. And then I want to think about it some more. And then I want to go and hear him again. Wash, rinse, repeat. And that's not his fault. That's just, that is quote unquote human nature he, at the moment. Yeah, I mean, no, 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 it, it totally is. And here's a question that came up a little while earlier when I, I was wondering, what is it that people want? <laughs> And and I think the I think you know just it, it gets so complicated at every at every possible turn because I, um what do I want I I I think I now know what I want I want to feel alive that's all you know that's all I just want to feel as 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 a and I don't even know what that means except I think you know I kind of know what it might mean and I I want I want more of that I want to feel really alive. Um, and I'm not, I mean, that's not true for everybody. Other, some people want money. Some people want fame. Some people want power, you know. And, uh, and, and there are, there have been people who, <laughs> they want to get out of here. <laughs> and, and that doesn't work either. <laughs> um, and, and it must be the case. Well, see, here's where we, here's where I still, I, I, I still have trouble with this this whole actual death of self thing because you've insisted again and again and again that there's no way to do it. It's you just stop. <laughs> it's like, oh man, well that doesn't do me any good. I want to read a. I don't want to read a book about it. <laughs> I, I just want to. I just want to fucking do it. How do you do it? You say, well, you just have to do it. I can't tell you. <sighs> Thanks. You know, it's like, okay, fine. <laughs> but it, it must, it must be the case. I think. But I get, it just must be the case that you hear, you know, that you hear all of this, like, as I'm talking all of this, you know, I know what my voice sounds like, right? It sounds like I'm being judgy and sarcastic and whatever, like that's my voice. But really, if you take away the voice and you just hear what's being said, if you just, without judging or feeling persecuted by the speaker, understand that, yeah, no, yeah, this is what I do. This is how I function and how I, who want truth, avoid truth. If you just see it, no, that seeing truth. it and having that one moment of clarity, what's clarity mean? What's clear? You're cleared out. That's what real clarity is. And in that moment, who's, who's there? <laughs> See, it's a one moment of, the of things, truth. One of the things that kept coming up, and it, and it still comes up in, in, in the class when you were there, um, was you were very um, insistent that there is no path, you know? <sighs> and, and that's, and, I, and I'm st I am still acting and behaving uh, towards the end of my life here as if, God damn it, there's a kind of path. And mine seems to be getting rid of all of these blockages and resistances to being open. That's how I generally think about it. And that's why I'm going back to Brazil, that I think there was a uh, person, presence, being, I don't know, something I don't know, that was that was showing me my blockages pretty mm -hmm. effectively. And with some help from my ego, maybe, <laughs> getting rid of a few of them, and I'm beginning to feel better. And, and I'm not for, you know, so let's keep this up. And so for me, that's the path. It, it's, well, that's it's, definitely good for you, for sure. And, yeah, it's good. You know, for me. and I think um, 
yes, you have to, I mean, insofar as there's a path, right? What is the path, what is the path to? The path is to being able to hear it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> with no, the clarity no, right. that I'm talking about. And yeah. you can't hear it with the clarity I'm talking about if you're unclear with all this other blockages and whatever. Yes. Yeah. So yes, you need to be free. You need to be as psychologically healthy and you know open as possible, I suppose. Um, so whatever path you take to get to being there is fine. You know, that that that's valid, I think. I mean, for me, it was peeling away the layers of the self, right? Like yeah. that's what I did. I wouldn't say that that, but that was not a path to, to the moment of nothingness. Yeah. Uh, in fact, if I think that, I think the thing that, God, I hate talking about myself this way, but if you're going to say I'm rare, the thing that makes me rare is seeing through that as not being the enlightenment experience. I think did, that's Did you know that at the time? No, no, I didn't know that at the time. It, that took, I don't know, how, however many months of... That's, what I, no, that's was, what I thought. Yeah, it was a later epiphany of like, oh, wait, I'm now that guy who uh, quote yeah. unquote gets it. I'm that guy yeah. who feels yeah. it and gets it. Yes, and yes, talk exactly. About it. Yeah. Oh, and, there, and, 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 and what's kind of remarkable, God, I'm going I'm to draw a parallel here for, for people who are listening to, to something else in Corbin, and, and and again, I'm going to flag it and say, I, I, I don't know if this is true or not, but I'm going to compare you to Nietzsche. <laughs> yeah. um, because Corbin said, so, said something in his book, Man of Light in Iranian Sufism, that has really stuck with me. And and it, it's it's enti entirely possible that it's a misreading of Nietzsche. So we don't. So Nietzsche is a is a straw man here. Okay, it's just Corbin says that Nietzsche, who said, you know, there God is dead, and and there's just the abyss, and it's nihilism, and then he somehow you know generated the Superman, and this comes back to Jeff Kripal because he he likes that story of Nietzsche and the Superman, and so we could talk about that sometime. Um, but in in Corbin's telling, Nietzsche sees the darkness, and he's he assumes that it's the darkness of the abyss that there is no truth, there is no God, there's just nothing. And then Corbin says, yeah, no, he misunderstood. He, that, he, Corbin says, that was a failed initiation. And the, the mystic who understands the difference between the two darknesses will be able to succeed in this initiation. And the two darknesses are the darkness of evil and nothingness and what Corbin calls the darkness at the approach to the pole. <laughs> the pole being, you know, God or your angel, the true divine, which is so true, so divine that it just totally blanks everything human out. And so it may be experienced as darkness and nothingness when it's really everything. And Nietzsche's failed initiation was to come back and want to be the Superman who can make his own laws, as opposed to the Sufi saint who would come back and presumably be humble and quiet and a nice guy, <laughs> you know. And so it seems to me not useless to compare what you just said about the death of the self after what you thought was the death of the self to, to Corbin's vision of the Sufi path of a successful initiation rather than the failed initiation of Nietzsche, which for Corbin gave birth to a lot of secular stuff in the, in the modern world. Hmm. But so in Corban's version of nothingness, it's still you encountering a nothingness, right? Oh, I no, I don't no, I uh she's having never been there <laughs> and having and and not um, frankly really not not having access to 
the literature uh, left, the writings left by some of these Sufi mystics with whom Corbin was familiar, I'm, I'm not really in a position to say what they say about that experience. It sounds like Corbin, it, it's still, there's this transactional thing going on. Like there is, where's the sense of being that? as opposed to, well, one, is, one type of nothingness brings you to hell. The other type brings you to heaven. Yeah. Um, but wait, what about, no, you are that. And that's why it's not frightening. Yeah, see, and, and, and this brings up another thing that doesn't, I think, compare at all in, in, in the story that you're telling. It doesn't compare at all with, with Corbin. And it's always made me a little bit um, uncomfortable. Because in my reading of Corbin, which, for what it's worth, my in my reading of Corbin, it's the the nature of the end result. Well, there is no end result, but and maybe that's the difference. Um, the, you got to push it to infinity. But as you become more and more individuated. That sounds like more and more into the, you know, it's just more of you. And and mm. I actually think I mean, he he obviously doesn't mean the ego. He's quite clear about that. It's it's not it's not really you, <laughs> this this being who will have this experience and and it's also Depends on where in Corbin you're reading this. In some places, it's clear that this is an infinite process of spiritual advancement. At other places, it looks like bang, done deal. But and that's what I'm sort of articulating here. I, I think everywhere Corbin should <laughs> default to the infinite procession of increased reality, which might. In his view, and I don't think I, I don't think I know what his view would be, but but it might, in the long run, <laughs> um, result in a kind of experience of no self. But no, see, he. Yeah, I'm not sure. I am unclear as to where Corbin stands on that place hmm. where he, it's all about you and your angel but it's not really you <laughs> and the angel becomes more and more and more real and eventually does become god no it doesn't become so so you know who knows <laughs> okay fair enough i just want to say one more thing just about the the judginess aspect of this which is like there's no judginess and it, there's a specificity or things have to be said in an exact way for the combination lock to click. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so if we're not careful, or, you know, put it in terms of the Wizard of Oz, you got to stay on the path. Don't go off into the poppy fields. And so when I have conversations about this stuff, I am, I am very much a taskmaster in terms of saying yes, no, where yeah. what we want in life, especially in our society, is like shades of gray, because shades of gray works for almost everything in society, but not mm. when it comes to truth there, mm. there it's mm. it's yes or no it, mm. you know and so i think that probably also grates on people to to hear that especially oh, when oh, oh. you know you're used to like i create my own reality and, oh, and this sort of well, stuff that's bullshit to create my own reality yeah. but but i mean that makes perfect sense to me because i've talked about this kind of shit to students young students older students for years and years now um and and one thing that the younger ones, <laughs> now I'm talking 20 years ago, so they're now all in their 50s. Um, but one of the things that the younger ones were usually super allergic to was any kind of religious fundamentalism, you know, because they've just, you know, there's, because anybody who tells you, I have the truth, you know that's going to be dangerous, you know? And so, 
and I'm I'm a good example of that. I get, I get it from my mother, but but, but it, was, it was one of the few good things I got from her. You no, know, no, I mean maybe no, and and that's <laughs> that's why I had such a, a such a moment of shock reading your stuff. You know, it was that one moment of oh oh shit <laughs> mary does <laughs> because because most people don't and most people who say they have the truth they're trumpy in, in the donald trump sense yeah. you know yeah. i mean they're they're authoritarians mm -hmm. and 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 most of us myself included have a lot of that um inflated egotism in us you know yeah and so well it doesn't help I mean, when you were growing up, it doesn't help that you had a lot of cults, you know, you, you had people experimenting with religions and psychedelics and all this stuff. And then you had out of that come the cults who do speak authoritatively, you know, yeah. Yeah. and so how can you not hearken back to like, oh, God, this sounds like authoritarianism and cults and yeah. stuff. And really, it's just like decisively the case and the the end of me giving a decisive case is don't believe me because i could be a culty authoritarian if you're interested yeah. in this figure it out yourself i just told it to you yeah. now you sit with it and if you are yeah. deeply honest with it you know it'll happen yeah. if not not and yes that sounds like an out again for me to say every time that you don't quote unquote wake up well you're just not doing it right it's not my <laughs> fault you know what i mean but yeah. that's what it, so just keep in mind all of that like yeah. that's why i like to put every all the magic tricks are on the table and, yeah. and here's yeah, yeah. how you do them because yeah. that ain't the trick like it's the magician who shows yeah. you all no, the no. behind the scenes stuff because that ain't the trick yeah yeah it's, <laughs> yeah no and 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 that yeah i mean and and i mean so that's what that's what makes it impossible for me to not take you seriously makes it impossible for me not to take you seriously because you manifestly don't take yourself seriously except of course really seriously <laughs> <laughs> and and that works that there's something that works about that it's what well makes... it's funny too you know because we're talking about this in terms of truth and spirituality but it's the same way again with the quote-unquote alien experience of like mm -hmm. you know i mean i do pair I, I used to do paratopia with jeff ritzman and we did skits and we made fun of people and we were crass and but when you get down to our experiences that's where the seriousness is yeah because for some reason there's no it i don't want to say there's no way to lie about your experiences but it feels like that and it feels mm -hmm. like when you're in the experience it's like you're with something that knows you better than you know yourself yeah. and you know that if you lie about it it it, it, it i don't know there, there's yeah. just something there are repercussions. <laughs> it feels like there are repercussions, yeah. whatever that is. I haven't experienced them. Yeah, but it just yeah, feels yeah, like yeah. there would be. Don't it just know. feels like something you don't lie about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even though yeah. you can joke yeah. about and you can maybe lie about other things or whatever, or you, you know, I guess what would that, I guess maybe for us, that would be uh, entertaining people we suspect are crap um, because we've got a show to do. We didn't really ever do that, but we, but I see other people doing it. And I think like, like, yeah. well, Whitley Strieber, for one, I think Whitley, and I've talked about this, I don't feel like I'm talking about him, yeah. but I think when you see a Whitley Strieber show, you don't know what you're getting when he's interviewing people, because he interviews a lot of what I would consider to be absolute garbage, because he's got a weekly show to do forever. Right. But when Whitley writes books about his own personal experiences, yeah. I don't get any sense that he's lying about that or being dishonest or that he could. And you know what I mean? And I, I feel yeah. like, so that's an interesting crossover from the spiritual stuff that there seems to be an intelligence that while you can do peripheral trickstery stuff at the heart of it, there is this seriousness and what, what, what you can't not to, be that. Yeah. Yeah. What, I mean, for better or worse, what, what occurs to me here is um, that one of the things that draws some people to what we call religion is some fundamental intuition that life might be meaningful. <laughs> that is to say, serious in some 
really profound way <laughs> that is almost inaccessible to the goofy little monkey brains that we have. And it's 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 that that makes it impossible. It's this core seriousness with the clowns running all around it. Yeah, and I, I think that's, I, I think that comes through in your stuff, you know, <laughs> for the people who can be sensitive to it. That no, no, I'm doing this because yeah, I'm an asshole, but man, this is like, this is really important. <laughs> Nobody's paying any attention <laughs> because life actually is fundamentally meaningful in ways that yeah, and and that's it. That's like a core intuition that a lot of people can smell from the distance but and really want and then we just go off wrong and kill people because we think it's important yeah you know i, I don't know quite how to articulate that but it's 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 what drives the arts sometimes you know <laughs> It's what can drive all the best in humanity, and and to and to close, which we will do, um, with a reference to Kripal's book, which we can talk about at some point in the future. That's what he's. That's what his argument is about the humanities, as opposed to the sciences. And for people who haven't read Jeff Kripal's, what would you read? I mean, any of his stuff, but uh, the superhumanities is the one in which he puts it the most clearly. But then it comes up again in his new book, How to Think Impossibly, and he's just you know, he's been the dean of the Division of Humanities or whatever at Rice, and so he knows academia, which he's been in for his entire adult life. And he's just sick and tired of the sciences getting all the credit. <laughs> and, and he said, no, no, we in the humanities, in religions, in, in, in the arts, in literature, we're the ones who understand what it might mean to be human. And these other people, they're really good at bridges and bombs and shit, but man, that's not what being human should be about. And he's just about fucking had it. <laughs> you know? And then he gets somebody like, and, it's, and so his argument is, the way <laughs> get a bigger hammer, you know, don't just say, oh, you know, you should read Rilke or, oh, you could read William Blake or you could read the Old Testament. No, he says, um, why don't you read Jeremy Vaney? Why don't you read Ridley Streber? You want to see some really weird shit that we think about, <laughs> you know, and, and, and you people over there should take this stuff at least seriously. And then if it doesn't, you know, then fine. So the, I, so that's why he's pushing so hard at the thinking impossibly, because the sciences are kind of at a place right now. Some of them, although I think they're on a kind of a an edge where they where new things might start happening <laughs> really fast and kill us all. Um, but they're kind of on on an edge where some of them really think they've kind of got the thing figured out. <laughs> You know. Well, you know, maybe this is a place to to maybe uh, pick it up next time, but um, t talk about Kripal and superhumans and all that fun stuff, and also science in the way that you're talking about it, because it's weird to me that it does seem as though, I mean, the, the idea of spooky action at a distance and um, the observer effect and these sorts of things in physics that that sort of show you that uh, things ain't so material at the base of reality here. It seems like we've known that for a long time now and, and still uh, relegate that to sci-fi tropes and things like this. But also, I mean, in with that comes things like quantum computing and like we're talking about AI and things that we don't fully understand hmm. what it, what is happening but we understand enough to just go ahead with it and keep building it. And so that's good enough. And so I wonder <laughs> if, if you can only do that, if you maintain this idea of materiality, this lie of like, uh, everything is just a material process anyway, because then it's kind of like spooky action at a distance. Well, we don't know why that works, but, um, but we'll figure it out eventually because we're scientists and eventually it'll be reducible to something. And if you can keep that in your head, then does it become okay to like do 
quantum computers where you don't know what's happening on the other side of the flip of the quantum thing particle or AI where like, sure, it could come a lot, but it won't because we're scientists and we'll figure it out. Like, <laughs> does that go hand in hand? Is that why they need to keep that in the face of all, of all evidence of how the, the fundamentals of, of physics actually are? Is that why they need to keep that, that facade yeah. of just material yeah. processes going me mechanics? Yeah. Um, well, it's also just momentum. You know, I mean, this is what we do. We figure stuff out and then we build things out of it, <laughs> whether we understand it or not, you know. So you're and, saying and we've I, always I, done I, that. I, no, I mean, I think there's something really, really, really right on about what you just said, you know, that it's 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 easier to, because the implication, it's easier to assume materialism even if your experiments are showing you that it must be bunk, because if you let go of your materialism, then, oh, then what? You know, you know it just throws, it just throws everything. So, so, so just one more, one more thing. I've, I've speculated for a long time without any data that it seems to me that if you look for scientists who don't mind talking about God in some sense, they're usually physicists. They're never biologists because physicists work at this level of abstraction um, and fundamental reality, which sort of puts them in this weird space, including quantum mechanics, um, whereas biologists are sort of buried in history and little bugs and stuff and 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 they don't have you know and and so there there is something there is something kind of fundamentally spiritual about physics and mathematics that you don't find in the more historical sciences like geology and biology anyway hmm. to be continued <laughs> to be continued um and i yeah i should go cook dinner for my wife but nice. this is i i you know i hope people enjoy this because i'm having a great time i i'm yeah i mean you're helping clarify your whatever it is <laughs> yeah your, your life yeah your experience yeah i mean that's what it amounts to you know, you're you're helping clarify your your own experience to me, and it was your experience, as as written in the books, that really, Christ, in spite of myself, <laughs> really got my attention. This this is yeah, I, I, this guy, I don't know, man, he's fucking weird, but this <laughs> this is strange. <laughs> I like I like something about this, and I still well, how do, cool so. that we can do this together, you know? Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs>